Hello, everybody. Welcome again to our broadcast. We continue our message on expanding our foundation. As we talked about last week, God has placed each one of us in the generation that He wants us to be in. And we are to follow in the faith of those who came before us and build a bridge on their revelation of the Word of God. Now, that doesn't mean that we're to try and force the younger generations into our mold, but we are to set their foundation in the Word of God so they can also continue to build upon it. We're expanding our foundation on today's broadcast. So be sure and watch the entire program. But before we get into God's Word, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song I didn't think it could be till it happened to me. Stir up your spirit and refresh your soul with Jeannie Caldwell's album, Colors, with songs like Didn't Think It Could Be. I didn't think it could be till it happened to me. And My Father. I want to be more like him, more like my father, more like him in every way. You're sure to be refreshed every time you listen. Order Colors by calling 1-800-264-2525. Colors is just $14 plus shipping and handling. Call and ask for product number 15009. Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. You know, Robert Woodruff was one of the presidents of Coca-Cola for 32 years. And his goal was that every person on the planet taste 
Coca-Cola. 32 years, that's a long time to be a president of a major corporation. Well, he accomplished his goal. You can't go anywhere in the world without seeing Coca-Cola. Well, our goal and our purpose is much more important than Coca-Cola. Amen? So, the initial foundation, if the foundations be destroyed, what will the righteous do? It falls to us. The initial foundation and vision is what we are to carry out. You know, I've served on FCF board. I served on the board of Eagle Publishing Company, Harrison House uh, Corporate. corporate uh, uh, I've served, I serve on the board of CUFI. I served on the board of FCF. I serve on the board of uh, ICBM. I've served on a lot of boards. And people have asked me, why, why do you connect with these people? people in these ministries because I believe in what they're doing I'm, I'm, I'm one of the uh, third year ministry teachers professors at CBC Cares Bible College in uh, Colorado Springs Andrew Womack why do I plug in why do I fly up there three times a year and minister to those third year Bible students because I believe in what they're doing and I want to impart into their, their lives. I want to be a part. Because I've had ministers ask me, say, well, why do, you, why do you do that? I mean, you don't get anything out of that. It doesn't benefit you. That's not why I'm there. I'm there to help them fulfill their vision. I'm there to see that these initial foundations, when I was a president of ICFM for 12 years and Buddy was president over the first 12 years and he turned it over to me, I had ministers that would tell me, said, why don't you use ICFM for your benefit, for your ministry? Take advantage of the position and the, you know, the membership. I said, no, that's not why I'm here. I'm here for one reason. I'm here to keep the organization steady to fulfill its original design and purpose. Are you all here? That's why we're here. We're here to keep FCF fulfilling its divine purpose and vision. Amen. Uh, go to Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. This is so powerful. In uh, Habakkuk, he, he gives us revelation. Habakkuk chapter 2. I will stand my watch. I served six years in the Navy, two years aboard uh, ship in two different ships and each ship has what they call a watch section it's it's when you're steaming out at sea it's when you pull your duty at wartime alert my watch section was on the bridge or in the five inch 38 gun mount we were shelling uh, the islands down at guantanamo bay when castro was acting up in the early 60s and i stood my watch four hours on and four hours off now Habakkuk said, my watch, my spiritual watch, my generation, if you please. I will set me upon the tower, I will watch to see what God will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I'm reproved. Or when I'm dealt with. When God gives me an assignment. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain. That he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now let me say this to you by the Spirit of God. A vision from God is a living thing. There's a difference between a vision and a goal. A goal is something that you set. A vision is something that God gives you. When God gives you an assignment, when God gives you a vision of what He wants you to do, that thing's alive. It's, it's eternal. It's spiritual. Amen. And therefore, if it's of God, and that vision is what God wants to bring to pass, then you can't, you can't uh, uh, drop it, change it, alter it. You can, you can change the way you present it, the way you administrate it, but it has to stay the same at its core. You can't change the core beliefs of the vision. You can't change the core direction of the vision. 
And I believe we're in the last days. I believe all the signs point uh, to the coming of the Lord and the rapture of the church, of course, occurs first. And the rapture could take place any day. But I don't know that everybody's ready to go in the rapture. Are you all ready? See, there, you know, there's, everybody's not thrilled about it. Uh, I asked this in our congregation one time. I said, how many of you ready to go in the rapture? About half of them raised their hands. I asked the Lord, I said, what's the matter with everybody? He said, they're earthbound. It's good. It's good. We're caught up in the carnal affairs of life. He said, they're even concerned about who's going to take care of their dog. Now, some people believe their dog's going in the rapture, but... I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> well, who's going to feed my cat or my dog? Or what about my bird or my goldfish? What, who's going to take... I don't mean un, be unkind. Who cares? What, what, what about my car note, my house note? Who cares? Well, who will take care of my dog? Let your unbelieving neighbor take care of your car, your dog, your house. Trump of the Lord, we're out of here. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, we have an assignment. We have a job. And we must not falter in this transition from generation to generation. Andrew Womack did, uh, 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 I guess it was the foreword in my book, The Heart of the Pastor. And he said that he uh, was in England and he asked an older minister, he said, what advice would you give to the young ministers today? And the older minister said, the advice that I would give to young ministers is to listen to the older ministers. I listened to my father. He was of the greatest generation. I listened to my grandfather. I was privileged to have been able to spend some quality time with my grandfather on both sides, mother and father, and my father. The greatest generation, those that went through the Great Depression, those that fought World War II, and then they came back and rebuilt America. And you begin to see what they went through. I mean, you can see, if you study it out, you can see why they were called the greatest generation. No generation has ever gone through what they went through. And so you, you need to know the spiritual generation, the people that plowed the fields spiritually, the people that endured, the people that gave us uh, the model and the mentors, the spiritual fathers. Numbers 27. It might, it might take me a little longer to close, but <laughs> Numbers and let's look at verse 27 through 18. And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom the Spirit is the Spirit, and lay your hand upon him. This is a transference. And set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, give him a charge in their sight. And you shall put some of your honor upon him. Now, these are the steps by which you, you, you make transition. Put some of your honor on him. Hmm. I asked the Lord about that. I said, now, Lord, why some of the honor? He said, because you need to keep some. It's good. It's good. The founders... The leaders, the mentors, the fathers, they need to keep some of their honor. You don't ever dishonor the founders, the mentors, the leaders. That's very important. And yet you also have to understand those that are taking the leadership. It's not easy because they are usually compared to the founders or the leaders. Well, you know, in our case with our pastors, well, he doesn't do things like you do. That's because he's not me. And I'm not him. And it's very difficult for them to step into the shoes 
of those that have built and founded and ministered. It's very difficult for them. You've got to think about them. I mean, they're, they're entering into a field they've never entered into before. They're, they're dealing with devils they've never encountered before. You ever heard of the gaggle leadership and the buffalo leadership model? The buffalo leadership model is all the buffaloes stand in a circle. And the head buffalo barks out the orders and all the other buffalo follow. But the gaggle leadership, the flock of geese, there's one goose that's in the lead. And this is proven scientifically. The lead goose breaks about 20 to 30 percent of the wind off of the rest of the gaggle because here he's in the lead and when they go through the clouds the reason the other geese honk is to let the leader know we're still back here that leader is breaking the wind the uh, challenges the devils the assignments that come against to steal kill and destroy and a lot of leaders don't make it they fold up and fall away how many transitions do you think have taken place in churches and ministries where somebody handed off to uh, the next successor and it didn't work they had to go back and take the church back or or the church failed or it went under I know a lot of churches that ha that's happened to and that's for another message another day, maybe tomorrow. But what happens is the, the new leader is not the right leader. Sometimes the next assignment is passed off to a biological member of the family, a son, a daughter, whatever. Sometimes it's not. The key is who does God say? What does God confirm? Because I know our, the, the, you know, the legal heir to our transition to our church and ministry would have been our son, Ronnie. He started with us. He helped build it. And he's a minister of the gospel, blah, blah, blah. But he said, Dad, I'm not a pastor. Hey, that's, I appreciate his honesty and his integrity. Because if you always hand off to what you think it should be, it may not be. Now he's on the board. He, he, he helps. He said, I'll help. But he said, I'm not a pastor. So you have to listen to the Lord and find out uh, what the, the Lord says. So he said, uh, you shall put some of your honor upon him. And then you go down to verse uh, 23. And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hands of Moses. Now, I, I have... Uh, a whole nother sheet here of notes I may or may not continue with this tomorrow but I was uh, reading and studying uh, the other day about this this kind of thing and somebody said you know and I've been very interested in this for a long time but more so now because I see the need in the body of Christ to bridge the gap between the previous generation and the, and the next generation but unfortunately, sometimes the next generation, the younger generation, the pop culture generation, whatever you want to call them, they don't want any advice from the previous generation. That's totally wrong. I want, even though I didn't like it sometimes, I wanted the advice of my father and my grandfather. You don't have to make the same mistakes. Well, I want to do it my way. Well, you know, so did Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra. They did it their way. They sang, I did it my way. That was Frank Sinatra's last song. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it God's way. So listen to what the Spirit of God uh, says for, for you to do. And do it the way he says do it. Anyway, I was reading, I was studying, and they said, you know, have you ever stopped to think? You don't, you don't see a third generation mentioned in the Scriptures you see, Moses, Joshua, Elijah, Elisha, Paul, Timothy. Wonder why? Most of the time, 
the vision or the assignment is lost or weakened after that second generation. Now, and I told Scott when I turned him, now he has three sons, two sons, all of them in the ministry, all raised on the mission field. I said, now, if this church continues another generation, I said, you've got one son, his oldest boy, Seth, is a missionary, just like Scott was. I said, he's, he's, he's a potential next generation. Rick Renner did a study on the churches at Ephesus a few years ago and wrote an exhaustive, huge book on the letters to the churches. And in that transition, he found that all those churches in uh, Asia Minor, all the churches that the letters written to, Thyatira, Laodicea, etc., were all offsprings of the church at Ephesus. You know, Paul started the church at Ephesus, turned it over to Tim. Paul pastored it, then he turned it over to Timothy. But we don't know what happened after Timothy. But we do know from reading the letters that the church at Ephesus repented because they had left their first love. And he said, if you repent, I will not remove your candlestick. Well, this is one thing that drove me. I didn't want to lose our candlestick. I wanted to make sure we were flowing. I wanted the church to continue on. And Rick documented the fact that after they turned the church over to Timothy, uh, the church at Ephesus continued for the next 300 years. That's what you want. I don't, I don't believe we've got... <laughs> We may not have a year or two left, but we still have an assignment. And I thought it was so precious. Uh, the Apostle John, you know, he was the only apostle that wasn't martyred. Brother Hagin said he believed that was because John was the apostle of love. You know, John walked in love, and he knew that, and he wanted you to know that. He told, he told in the Scriptures, he said, you know, Peter and John ro- ran to the grave, Jesus' grave, And it says, and the apostle that Jesus loved did outrun Peter. (laughs) Remember the cross? Jesus looked down from the cross, said to John, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. That was John's last assignment. Well, he was banished to the Isle of Patmos because they couldn't kill him, couldn't boil him in oil. He steps out of the pot, and so they put him on an island a rock and he stays there for about 18 months and then he comes back what does he do he goes back to Ephesus and finds Jesus's mother she's still living and they both live up in the hills the mountains overlooking the church of Ephesus until they both die to me that I think that is so powerful John kept his last assignment until Mary died, until he died, they went back to Ephesus in the church that was established by the Apostle Paul and attended church there and ministered there until they both died. Hallelujah. Now that's the biblical model, folks. And we're in a position right now. Are we going to keep our assignment? Are we going to build on the foundations that have been laid for us? Do you want Buddy to come back here and scold you? (laughs) No, we're going to stay and we're going to bloom where we're planted. We're going to continue into the next generation. And I believe they're going to reach, we're going to reach thousands and millions of people. Folks, we're living in a privileged generation. I believe we're the generation that's going to see the coming of the Lord. I'm talking about the rapture. Be sure to watch next week's broadcast as we continue this message. I trust that this message has ministered to you and helped you understand the bridge between the previous generation and the present generation, and you have a part to play. I'd like also to encourage you to get your copy of the teaching that I did at the Kenneth Copeland Ministers Conference 2017 entitled Righteous Revolution." you're going to get a great revelation. It's $5 plus shipping and handling. It's offer HC012. 
That's number HC012. You can call the number on the screen, 1-800-264-2525, or you can log on to the website, vtntv.com, and you can order your copy today. I'd like to pray with those of you that have never asked Jesus to come into your heart. You're watching right now. You might think you're a Christian because you go to church or you believe in God, but you have to make a profession of your faith. If you've never done that, would you stop what you're doing and pray with me right now? Just close your eyes. Repeat after me. Just say, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe God raised you from the dead. I'm asking you to come into my heart, Jesus. Save me now. Take away my sin nature. Give me your righteous nature. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me, filling me, and cleansing me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today and you meant it, you said it with your mouth, believed it in your heart, I'd like you to have this book that's on the screen right now, God Loves You. This book will help you get started in your life with the Lord. It's easy to get. Just log on to vtntv.com. You can download the book for free or you can call 1-800-264-2525 and tell the operator you just prayed with Pastor Caldwell and you'd like that book and we'll send it to you. We're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, please let us know. You can email us at prayer at vtntv.com. Or you can call 1-800-264-2525. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. VTN is on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time. Remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch online. To watch this video on demand, Log on to vtntv.com and click watch. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen.